Let's take a moment and work through an example real fast. What I'm going to do is build a simple progress bar triggered by a button using Vue.js. Okay, so let me go ahead and get rid of all of these properties. Start fresh, clean view instance, and I'm going to get rid of all of these elements. Start with a clean app. And let's start by just building this with vanilla HTML. Um, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to style, I, I'm only going to have two divs, but I'm going to style both of them in line just so I don't have to open another file and another screen. <clears throat> Once again though, you shouldn't you should not style your elements in line. Just a, just a reminder. All right, so I'm going to create a div. I'm going to give it a class of progress bar just so there is no ambiguity about what it is. And I'm going to create another progress bar within the progress bar. If you've never tried creating a progress bar before, it's usually one element encased in another, and it's the smaller element that actually changes width. And that's the approach we're taking here. Um, now that we have, when they've got classes, let's start styling them. So this top one, the, um, the parent div, I'm going to give it a width of 500 pixels, a height of 75 pixels, background color gray, and let's give it a padding of about 5 pixels. Simple. Okay, and then this child progress bar, Do a little formatting. Okay, this child progress bar, I'm going to give it a style of height 100%. So it's going to be 100% the height of its parent. Pretty straightforward. Then background color, tomato. Um, yeah, and that should do it. Just for just to check and see that we're doing everything correctly, I'll give it a width of 50%. Save, and let's take a look at what we're dealing with. Okay, so there's our progress bar. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The gray div is the parent container. The tomato is the actual bar. Let's maybe make the whole thing a little shorter since we're dealing with a smaller window. There we go. Okay. And let's also have uh, the actual progress number inside the inner bar. So in here, I'm just, I'm just gonna write 50% for now, just as a stand-in. Okay. Um, let's give this another style property of text align center center that number within yeah okay um, ideally it'd be right in the middle but you know that's not why that's not why we're here so I'm not gonna worry about that just now <clears throat> um, so we're all set up I think with our vanilla HTML pull this out and take a closer look our app element containing the entire bar. We have the parent div with a couple stylings and we have the child div also with the class of progress bar with a couple more stylings and a, currently a stand-in percentage of progress. Okay so this is basically our uh, starting point or our prototype. This is what we want it to look like at a given static point in time. We also said we wanted to trigger this progress bar. We want to make it start with a button. So let me just add a button in here. Button type equals button start. OK. 
right? We're good to go. Now, now we need to think about how we can use view to help us. The first thing that jumps out to me is this 50%. This seems like something which should use interpolation or two-way data binding. So inside my data object, I'm going to create a property called progress. And I'm just going to set it at, well, let's set it at 50 for now. So we're still looking at the same thing. And instead of this 50 stand in here, I'm going to use interpolation, double, double curly braces or mustache syntax to display progress plus per, um, percentages, percentage. Let's see. Whoops, this percentage needs to be a string. Remember, anything inside these double curly braces uh, is essentially JavaScript. So I want that percentage. Can I need to save? Keep not saving. Hey, there we go. And we get 50% displayed based on the value of progress. Let's change this to 20%. And just make sure that that's still working. Good. So it changes based on the value of progress. Um, now we want the width of this inner progress bar to also be dependent on the value of progress. So I'm going to get rid of this width property in the styles and in the style attribute. And what I'm going to do is use the bind the attribute, pardon me, that I'm going to bind it to is going to be style. Now, I've got a style attribute right here. Does that prevent me from creating another one which is bound using a view directive? The answer is no. This is completely okay to have both a regular style that stays static and a style which is bound using a view directive and that can change dynamically. That's completely okay, and that's what I'm doing here. So I'm binding the style, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to plug an object in here. And the object is going to contain one property, which is width. And remember, these, are, these properties and values are going to be read as CSS properties. So this is essentially just writing width in CSS or in a style attribute. And the value of that width property is going to be the value of progress plus percentage. Okay, so let's change this to 20% and preview. There we go. The text changed, but so did the width of the actual bar. Let's change it to 80%. Here we go. The width of the bar, the progress of the bar, is dependent on the value of this progress property. So far, so good. Now the only thing left to do is make it run on a button click. You can, of course, write a vanilla function using JavaScript um, the way we've learned up to this point, but we're going to take advantage of view. And the way to write this kind of functionality with view calls for what's called a method. Very similar to the methods that we encountered when we went over constructor functions. So now, at the closing curly brace of my data object, I'm going to add a comma and create a new property. So now we have element, data, and methods. This is going to be another big object. Methods is a very common object that you'll encounter in many few instances. And the methods tends to contain an app's functions. I'm just going to leave it there. It, I, it can get more complicated than that, but methods contain the functions behind an app. So inside methods, I'm going to create um, a property called start. And start is going to be a function itself, a method. 
And that's it. That's it. Um, and what I want to do is I want to bind this button to run this start function when it's clicked, right? So you might be tempted to do an on click equals start, something like that. That's not going to work with a view method. What we need to do instead is use a, another view directive called v on click, just like that. Okay, v on is a view directive for listening for events. And this is going to listen for a click event. If I wanted, I could do a listen for a scroll event, a key up event, a key down event. I can even listen for a specifically key down on the enter key event. But what we're listening for is a click, V on click. And the value of this is just going to be the name of the method, start. No, no parentheses to invoke it, just the name of the method, and it will automatically run. The reason why we do not invoke it, to put it simply, is that the view instance itself invokes that function. V on is a directive for, for listening for an event. Click is the event we're listening for. Notice I don't write V on colon on click. It's just V on click. So on scroll, on click, on key up, you can use all of these, but you have to take out the on, and it's replaced with v dash on colon event. All right, so now this will run the start method when the button is clicked. Now all we need to do is define the start method. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and jump right into this. What we need to do with this method is update the value of progress, right? So we need a reliable way to refer to this property from inside this function. And the easy way to do that is this dot progress, okay? This inside any property of methods, this anywhere inside a view instance, unless scope has changed, this refers to data, okay? So in a view instance, this, the this variable, refers to your data object. So this dot progress refers to data dot progress. This is how I can update properties contained in my data object inside my methods. It's, it can be complicated and if, it's, if your head is spinning then I encourage you to follow along with this video, just code along with me, and then try it on your own and try changing things around. Okay? It can be difficult to understand at first but all it takes is a little practice and you will see you'll be able to connect the dots. Okay, so this refers to data. Now, let's just leave that there for now. I'll come back to it. Okay. Okay, so what do I want this start method to do? I want, let's say I just want to increase the width of the progress bar, uh, which is going to start at zero. I want to increase the width of the progress bar by um, five, five percent, every 500 milliseconds. Okay, so that makes sense? Okay, so then let's do something like this. Let's create var width equals five. And then underneath that, let's do a set interval, uh, yeah, set interval function. Which sets this dot progress plus equals width. Just like that. So now when this runs, progress should be five. We'll run the 
seconds every 500 milliseconds. And after we do that, we will actually increase width plus equals five. Okay, now this is almost perfect. This will actually create a scope issue, and I'm going to tell you how to solve that right now. This is not really related to Vue.js. This is more um, an, an advanced JavaScript issue. This has changed its meaning by the time we're inside this function. So the way to make sure this always refers to what we want is I'm going to create a new variable vm and set it equal to this and here I'm going to change this to vm so now rather than referring to a variable which by this point has changed value I'm now referring to the correct iteration of this simple as that okay now every let's see I said interval function vm dot progress plus equals width width plus equals five and this is going to repeat every 500 milliseconds, every half a second. Let's save, see if that works. Oh, I didn't save my HTML yet. There we go. Now that beyond directive is in there. Reload. There we go. Now the problem is that it keeps on going. <laughs> Uh, let's make this a little longer since it seems to be 1,000 milliseconds. So it goes pretty fast. Um, you know, we don't even need this line. Reload. So now it should increase by only 5% every one second. There we go. Now we, we, we want to stop it from going beyond 100%, right? So let's put an if statement inside our set interval function. If vm.progress is greater than or equal to 100, then you might try something like return here. Um, but there's a little bit of a quirk to set interval functions that requires a bit of creativity. And if you'd like, I'm happy to explain why I do this next thing on, uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but I'm just going to breeze on through it because this is, yet again, nothing to do with Vue and more to do with um, advanced JavaScript. So let's see if it stops at 100%. It stopped. Okay, excellent. Briefly, um, set intervals are actually notoriously difficult to halt. You need to do it with a clear interval function can't just use return or anything like that, unfortunately. And what clear interval takes is a unique numeric identifier that is generated randomly whenever set interval runs. So storing it in a variable and then referring to that variable allows you to break out of set interval. Don't worry about that, unrelated to view. Um, if you are interested in doing more research on that, by all means, um, but the What's going on in this function notwithstanding, we've written a not overly complicated function inside a property of the method object in our view instance. And we bound that function in that property to run on click for this button using the v on directive. So we're now 
living exclusively inside our view instance and controlling entirely our HTML. And just like that, we've created a really nice, simple progress bar, and we can change the speed of it fairly easily. Change this to 100 and make it super fast. There we go, really nice. Um, I can also show you how to write a similar function that randomizes the speed at which the bar increases, not just um, the pace, but the, the jumps that it makes. But that will be for another time and is not terribly relevant to this discussion right now, which is exclusively about view. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Please uh, do try this on your own and experiment with some of these values. Experiment with, experiment with different ways that you can um, pace this progress bar, different styles you can apply. Maybe try binding some styles. Maybe when it hits 100, it turns green. Uh, real quick, how about if we want this button to actually disappear when we hit 100%? Let's do that using a view directive. To do that, I'm going to use the if. The if equals progress is greater than or equal to, oh no, progress is less than 100. So now, as long as progress is less than 100, this element will show. But once we hit 100, it should disappear entirely. So once I hit start, let's watch that button. Disappeared. Perfect. Okay, it's exactly what we want. This would take quite a bit more code if we were not using view, and we would not have as precise control over everything and all of these different um, properties and all of these all of the states involved so if you're still not clear on why view is very powerful and useful that's okay it will come with time but I'm gonna need you to trust me on this uh, I hope this has been interesting please try it on your own um, next time I see you in class we're going to be building a full little application using Vue.js